Hey y'all, I'm Sarah. This is my husband Jay. We're One Dream Farm along with five crazy kids that aren't in this video. Um, we just recently, as in recent today, have decided to start vlogging because we have a Facebook page for our farm and people have been asking us, basically coming and saying, you know, there's a lot going on right now in the world that's kind of scary. We want to be more self-sufficient. How do I go about it? Where can I start? Just nervous. So we decided to come to y'all today with a little bit of insight of how we got started, where we come from, and a few ideas of where y'all can get started and maybe ease some of this fear that some of you may, ha may have. Especially with so much going on today in the world, with it being 2020, this is the year that just keeps on giving. So maybe we were hoping that we could help y'all out and give a little bit of hope, you know. Uh, with that being said, you know, we come from uh, another part of Georgia, and uh, we have just recently re relocated here. And uh, six months ago? Yeah, March. And um, we had a completely restart. We've been homesteading now for about five years. Once we got married, we started taking on the fact of let's live a healthier, <laughs> let's live a healthier, more self-sustainable lifestyle, to where we don't have to rely on the grocery stores or just eating food that we're not sure where it comes from, or what's in it, or what's in it. We do, like Sarah said, we have five children. That. Um, I mean, other than ourselves, we have our parents and everything else that we worry about where our food's coming from. And this year is definitely no exception to that fear. You know, everybody right now is concerned about where our next meals are coming from. Or what's going to happen. Exactly. Am I going to be prepared? Exactly. And so, with that mindset, it takes time to build up to... A complete self-sustainable point but it's never too late to get started and there's certain things that anybody can do no matter where you're from what your budget is like what how much land you have to actually be self-sustainable to an extent at some point and um, so every little bit helps no matter what you're doing if you're doing something then that helps Something is more everything. than nothing. Just like the saying goes, something is more than nothing. And so we decided to answer a few questions about how we got started. Well, luckily, where we got started from, we already had a little piece of land. And we're able to get chickens, goats, uh, even a cow to raise for processing. Pigs, rabbits, quail, we've had it all. Well, when we relocated, we only kept a few of our Nigerian dwarf goats uh, to bring with us. Um, we completely had to restart with everything else, which currently we have chickens, rabbits, quail, pigs, ducks, and a couple gardens. But it has, it's been a long journey to getting us back to this point to where we're I don't know. You we're say, probably about 60% of the way right now. Yeah. We're not where we want to be. But, but again, we're, like we're doing we're doing something. Yes. And so, oh, like Sarah was saying, we have got a lot of questions and concerns about what if something, the source shut back down and I can't, you know, provide food or we cannot pick up the next meal from the grocery store. Well, there's certain things that you can do no matter where you live, no matter how much land you have. That can help you along the way. Um, one of them is being uh, pick an animal that fits your needs um, and your lifestyle, your your home life. If you live in an apartment or um, a subdivision that has restricted noise, a lot of people say chickens are the best way to go. You know, because they're great starter animals, which they are. I would never take that away from anybody saying that chickens aren't great. But like I said, if you live in an apartment or you live in a neighborhood where a noise could be you know off-putting a complaint you know nobody complaint. wants to so, get on anyone's nerves yeah, so there's a couple different animals that I would say would be a great start for somebody like that and one of them being quail 
um, you can is a great protein source. Meat and eggs. We raise uh, uh, jumbo cartoonix quail, which they're awesome to raise. They're easy. They're low maintenance, and they yield fast. Six weeks, you have a quail ready to lay eggs or ready to put in the freezer. So they're great dual purpose animals. Very low cost. So if you're on a budget, they're awesome. Mm -hmm. And also, they're small. They don't need a lot of space to run. Small uh, rabbit style cages. Um, as long as they're well maintained, well kept, they're great. I have know people that raise them in basements, raise them in apartments, um, in a small backyard. It doesn't take much at all. And another animal that I would, I would like to touch on would be rabbits. As you can see behind us, this is our rabbit tree that we're sitting in front of today, which we have our breeder rabbits in. And um, we currently grow uh, New Zealand rabbits uh, for meat. And um, we do use rabbit tractors to grow a lot of our bunnies in, to move them on fresh pasture every day, and um, to help them grow in the freshest, most humane way possible. And, um, but I understand, with that being said, not everybody can do that. But rabbits are still an awesome animal. Just go to your local pet store, you can pick up any type of cage that's for small animals and they'll do just fine. They, it's more than just a pet. They uh, are a great meat source. They, uh, they yield quickly. Um, Reprodu reproduction. I mean, it could take three, three rabbits, two does, which are females, one buck, which is the male, and you could reproduce enough food to have, for a family of four, to have at least one rabbit meal every week of the year. And it may not seem like much, but once you break it down, that's a very low cost for a high yield. And that's, and they're really easy maintenance. Um, kids our kids take care of our animals and um not by themselves uh, we don't we're not like slave drivers or anything like yeah. <laughs> we get out here and help but they just help a lot with the rabbits yes they're easy to process uh, as far as if you wanted to consider going into meat it's uh one of the great beginner animals along with chickens or quail because they're really great animals to introduce you into homesteading and getting you to the larger animals like uh, pigs or cattle. Um, Meat-wise, they're a lot like chicken. They can go in a, a, in several different dishes. Mm -hmm. We had them in dumplings last night. Yes, great, good cooking. <laughs> but um, and they go a long way. Like the New Zealanders, they get up to a really nice size. So one rabbit could feed a family of four just with one as a whole meal just one rabbit it doesn't take a lot same thing with quail quail is really dense meat to where it doesn't take a lot to do they're tiny birds but they it fills with, you up it fills you up the density of the meat just fills you up and it's it's awesome great tasting cooked multiple ways and um i enjoy raising them they uh, incubate um hatch in 15 days and then Within six weeks, you have quail to either reproduce or something to put in the freezer. That's a great thought. Another thing that we would like to touch on is gardening. Everybody's wondering, you know, right now with all these outbreaks of different diseases, wisteria, E. coli, you know, salmonella outbreaks in their local grocery stores, and it's got to the point where it's not just meat. It's a lot to go on with a lot uh, of produce. Produce. Year and um, you know fresh fruits and veggies and like I said not everybody has enough room to have a 50 by 50 you know garden plot but think about any form of fashion is it being on your front porch at a windowsill um, small raised bed gardens are awesome we actually use six raised beds this year we've grown anything from um, tomatoes, tomatoes, potatoes. To potatoes. <laughs> uh, we currently have green beans growing in our raised beds, and that we're currently picking green beans off of. Of uh, very simple to build, cost efficient, and honestly, they don't take up a lot of room. If you don't have a lot of room, 
don't let that discourage you from homesteading because you don't have to be 100% self-sufficient. Just anything that you can do to your personal ability will make a big difference. I mean, also with the thoughts of giving into canning, which I've obviously, whoever cans knows, a lot of people's taken into it because you cannot find a jar <laughs> at all. So with that being said, there's other ways to, you know, store food. I'm five gallon buckets um, for dry beans and rice is a great alternative, um, a way to set up, you know, and prep, you know, for future meals to put away. It, you don't only have to rely on jars. You can also rely on dehydrating. Think about vacuum sealing. And another point that has recently, well, I guess, came to our attention not too long ago was the canning of meat. And a lot of people, like, we never really gave a lot of thought to just, say, chicken in in the in a jar uh, of course know about canned chicken but you don't think about it when you're growing fresh chickens like I have freezers but then it goes to if my freezer goes out my power goes out then I could lose a whole year's worth of chicken so putting it in mason jars and canning fresh chicken or any type of meat of that it's another great option to, to, to think of even if you go to the store and you buy it because you cannot grow your own, don't only rely on your freezer to store everything you got. Dehydration, uh, dehydration is awesome. Yes, it's not the most nutritional way to do it, but if it comes down to it and the store shut down again, and we don't know where our next meal is coming from, that's a great thing to think about. Ways to put up anything that you can possibly put up to store just in case. But don't just, like he said, if you don't have it, you can go to the store. This year, our garden, I mean, they did okay. The raised beds did really well. Um, but the land that we moved to had never been touched. It had never been used for farming or anything like that. So I did have to go to farmer's market and get some vegetables to put with ours mm -hmm. to can. Yes. But now I have it set up, you know, I have that put back. Do I feel bad that my garden didn't produce everything? Yeah. But do I feel relieved that I have stuff canned and put up for my family? Yes. So it's just, it takes time. It takes time to build up to everything. Just because we said we built up in six months to all these animals that we have and everything doesn't mean everybody can. We, we barely did it. Trust me, it, it's not something that you go into super lightly but with that being said hopefully some of the things some of the topics some of the things we discussed will help ease some of that worry and um, if y'all would like for us to come more with more videos please like share comment um, tell us what y'all would like to hear or like to see um, we have great ideas of different styles of uh, ways to raise your animals. Um, from the rabbit tractors that we use, uh, we uh, use chicken tractors to grow our own uh, meat birds. Um, to anything that, you know, y'all could possibly think of. And there's the cat. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we're just here to help, not only ourselves, but to help anybody in need. And um, maybe if we could share just a little bit of information to help y'all get over whatever you're going through. You know, we're also just great people to just talk to. You know, if you feel the need to ask any questions or just get something off your chest that you might be personally going through, we would like to, you know, be a shoulder to lean on or an ear to listen. So don't be afraid to reach out to us in any way y'all would like. And, you know, we would try to pass just good vibes to everyone out there in the crazy world we're going and we're living in right now so and we want to reassure everybody that you can do it yes you can it's not going to be hard all right it's not going to be easy it's going to be hard i'm not going to lie to you but you can yes you just have to go into it with the right mindset go on kitty <laughs> oh it 
It'll take time. Yard full of animals, house full of kids, but I wouldn't live any other way. We love it. It's a healthy lifestyle, and, and it's fun to get the kids involved and teach them things that has honestly long been forgotten by a lot of our generations. And I feel that we'll, some of these, you know, skills and, and tools that we use today in our lifestyle won't be around in another 50 years unless we can all start going back to some of some of this. It doesn't have to be 100%, but the more we can learn and share with each other, I think the better we're all going to be in the long run. But I guess that concludes our first video. Yeah, um, bear with us. We're, we're new to this. We're, we're new to this. this. Never um, done this. Um, <laughs> so we're just rambling, if, basically. If, yeah. If y'all would like to see more videos from us and follow us along our journey as we rebuild our homestead and possibly give you ideas for yours. Yeah, ideas for yours and you know, any questions like I said, any questions that can be answered or asked, just go ahead, feel free to shoot us any questions. We'll answer what we can. And if y'all want us to come back and make some more videos, just let us know. And we would definitely like to share some of our ideas and some of our thoughts with all of y'all. So with that being said, I guess this is conclusion to our video and um, hope to see y'all next time. Y'all like and follow our page on Facebook. If you will, One Dream Farm, please like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Also, One Dream Farm. <laughs> Thank y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. Be safe. Be safe.